Good morning, St Luke's. Uh, we're looking at Psalm 137 this morning, and as you read that, you'll see the opening lines uh, are by the rivers of Babylon. I couldn't get myself away to a river, but I've got a, a pretty uh, inadequate homemade pond behind me uh, that we're still waiting to spring into life as a little bit of a lockdown project. Uh, when you read the opening uh, verses, you see, by the rivers of Babylon, we sat down and wept when we remembered Zion. Those are the opening words of Psalm 137. And I reckon, I reckon uh, more than just a few of you uh, began tapping your feet or singing tunes in your head as you heard them or you read them. Although they weren't, uh, it wasn't their original song, the words accompany a well-known disco tune uh, by the band Boney M. I think there is a double irony in that. Uh, firstly, that a popular song should make us so familiar with this psalm. Uh, for when we look at the content of its psalm and its themes, uh, they certainly aren't popular or common to us. Indeed, one commentator has urged caution before using this psalm in prayer uh, for us, because actually the historical setting is so specific indeed. The second irony, of course, uh, is that the upbeat tunes of disco uh, should be applied to a psalm whose themes are anything but upbeat. Let's start with that historical setting. Uh, the psalm sits in the mouths of worshippers from the temple. They are in the midst of experiencing exile after the Babylonians uh, have attacked Jerusalem. And so therefore they themselves have been taken away to Babylon itself. Absent from the temple and the centre of God's presence, uh, they have literally hung up their instruments. And feeling unable to worship, their situation is worsened by their captors who demand songs and it seems implicit for the purpose of mocking them. Verses 4 to 6 show a longing for Jerusalem and a return to worship. Verses 8 and 9 are very specific. Clearly the Edomites wronged them greatly in the course of the attack uh, and these words are a request for vengeance against them. There is no disco beat that can mollify uh, the sentiment of the final comment that happy is the one who seizes the Edomite children and infants and dashes them against the rocks. We've dealt with the element of curses as a component of the Psalms before. Uh, do look back at the video on Psalm 109 for a little bit more on that. For today though, I want us to think about how we can pray this Psalm for ourselves. First, uh, we need to be those that feel the torment of the writer as they weep over being distant from Zion and actually call down certain potential curses upon themselves. Uh, they write, may my right hand forget its skill. May my tongue cling to the roof of my mouth. Why and when? Well, if Jerusalem is not their heart, oh, sorry, not their highest joy. Through the lens of the New Testament, uh, Zion and Jerusalem are symbolic of the gathered people of God in the presence of God worshipping together. Friends, we too should be tormented uh, that Christian worship is constrained at this present time. Also, we should be disturbed that around the world our brothers and sisters in Christ often live under the pain of persecution for their faith. And so gathered worship is a high risk activity. And yet so often, for people in that context, it is the foremost thought in their hearts. Reports do suggest that pandemic responses are being used around the globe to actually target Christian communities in certain countries. Now, I'm not suggesting this as a summons for all of us to return to in-person worship at St Luke's at this time. But it is a summons for us to ask ourselves exactly how high a value we place on meeting together as a church family, gathered together in worship as though we were uh, in Jerusalem and Zion. If it is one of those things for us that is only good when the time and inclination allow for it, then we do need to heed the message of verse 6, to consider Jerusalem as our highest joy. Now that is challenging, a challenging thought for us to comprehend. Likewise, I imagine, uh, if we think about the circumstances behind the situation of this would-be worshippers. See, Babylon is a place of ungodly activity. It is symbolic of being bound by cultural and worldly forces that are set against God. However, exile was also an act of God against his people on account of their half-heartedness. 
uh, with their worship drawn towards false idols and their neglect of the poor and the vulnerable. As hard as it is to consider, we must ask ourselves whether disruption to our gathered communal worship, uh, both uh, nationally and globally, is an act of God to both prune and purify his church, his people. In the current circumstances, the Archbishops of Canterbury and York have called uh, Christians to pray at 6pm each day for the church and the nations. Dare we make a prayer, make part of that prayer, uh, one of repentance. Repentance that the church in our land has so often uh, been faithless in its worship and its deeds. Might we weep over the Babylonian captivity that hovers over our church and nation at this time. Friends, let's pray together now. Loving Heavenly Father, we ask that you would deliver us from the grip uh, of our global pandemic. That means we cannot worship you in heart uh, and mind and soul and in presence together. Please deliver us uh, from that and set all of us to have our heart's highest desire as being the worship of you with our brothers and sisters together. Amen.